and welcome to Technique Friday. Now you would have seen on my vlog earlier this week that I have been discovering pastels and I'm talking here specifically about soft pastels. So soft, pastel, soft pastels, are, they actually feel like chalk. They are not oil pastels. These are very chalky, very brittle and they come in a number of forms. Now I have an old set of soft pastels, Munyo, which they still sell today and they're in blocks and I used these when I was doing scrapbooking so I actually have a really good collection of these already in basic colours. Now that I'm getting into life drawing and experimenting in different ways to shade faces, um, I have invested in some artists grade soft pastels. Now I'm not saying that these aren't artist grades, I'm just saying that these are schminker and they are fabulously well pigmented and are considered very good. I have a Faber Castell one here as well. I've just grabbed a little bit of a selection and I also have a set of Derwent 72 pastel pencils. Now Having used these personally, the difference between something like this and a stick pastel here is that one, you can use finer details in your drawing. But the other thing that I found myself is that when I was drawing with these, I didn't press heavily into the paper. Now, when I then use something like an extremely soft bristled brush to wipe away the dust, because these are very chalky, you do get a lot of dust with using pastels. Now, if you lightly, if you move with your fingers to rub it out, you will smear them everywhere because your finger is your main blending tool, unless you have blending tools as well, which I have some extra ones on order. Um, that specifically are designed for pan pastels. Personally, I think investing in pastels, whatever way is the cheapest for you is the best. Pan pastels, there's an awful lot of pastel in that pan. And unless you're a serious pastel artist, I don't think you'd ever use it all, really. They'll just sit there. But the one thing is the longevity of the product will sit and sit and sit and sit and sit. And I know for myself that these are about 12 years old and they're as good as the day I bought them. So that's one thing to think about and not always true with a lot of mixed media products today that can go off or mouldy. Now today I'm doing this exercise on Canson drawing 220 GSM paper. This is superior quality fine tooth white paper for drawing in pencil char charcoal, chalk, ink, wash and poster colour. So it will take pretty much anything you throw at it so today I will be testing that it has a C grain which is quite a smooth I would consider it a medium to smooth grain just enough tooth to hold those chalks and pastels and certainly not the rough kind of grain that would give you automatic texture in watercolor now today I'm going to show you the basics of pastels and the sorts of things that you can use them for I am also going to experiment with a few different techniques to do with using different mediums to set these. So the traditional technique is you will do your pastel drawing and then you will seal it with a spray adhesive fixative. You won't stroke anything over it because it could smear the pastels. Now if you've got a good quality artist pastel then what you will find is that the pigment grabs into the tooth of the paper better than a poor quality pastel. So my advice is to pick those colors which you like now all these artist quality pastels they range from about a dollar twenty to seven dollars eighty generally in art stores i managed to pick mine up on a big sale and i got these all for a dollar each which was amazing because they are at the more expensive end of the the um, spectrum or you can buy them in sets this is a set of 24 and I think at the time I wonder if I've still got the price on it somewhere I think at the time it cost me under twenty dollars which means that you get them for less than a dollar a stick and these sticks are smaller and more brittle and if you were to actually ah see there we go chalk so the other thing that's really important when you have pastels and chalky things is a kneadable eraser and that acts 
is the eraser that's so soft and kneadable that you can put it into a fine pond and it will get rid of charcoal and pastels without smearing which is something that is extremely important when you are starting to play with pastels because you inevitably smear right let's get started so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to show you the basic techniques that you use for pastels so I'm just going to grab a pastel pencil out and I'm going to use darker colors than I would normally use okay so what I'm going to do here is just draw a rough face and I'm just going to put my just a light cross in draw some eyes draw a nose draw lips and fill these eyes in bright eyebrows and hair right so we have a basic basic face that we're looking at here and the interesting thing to note when you're doing something like this is that anything that I just did can be instantly rubbed out so unlike color pencil you can rub this out you can smudge it in and smear it in so all I'm going to do first is actually lay down a little bit of dark pastel and I'm just going to stroke it I don't have any applicators at this stage and I'm just going to put in a few shadow points just gentle shadow points and now all we do is we rub that in with our finger now depending on how small your face is you may want to use an applicator but I find that my finger works well now I tend to use a round scrubbing motion because my goal is to actually get rid of the rough lines of chalk that I've put in and you have to be careful at this stage that the chalk that you've put in for the actual features has not you do not rub that as well so it's just these are under layers that you can use and remember in mixed media it is all about layers so this is not a lesson for die-hard chalk fanatics this is learning about using your pan pastels so you could do that with an applicator so you can already see the shadows starting to form in the in the face here and all I'm going to do now is just pull out a really really light what's this color called it's a burnt this is actually called a burnt sienna but it's lighter and I'm just going to add in some rough features here so that you can start to see that this face is now starting to take shape and of course it's a lighter and I put circles here because I want them to be the cheeks and the 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 face is really now coming to life and is also somewhat believable now I'm going to play with this face a little bit now because there's a couple of ways that I approach this and this is when you would use a fine applicator or you could use uh, cotton balls or uh, q-tips you could use any of those things and they will absorb a lot of the chalk but and they will also help you lay it down so what you could do now is you could leave it at that and really start adding some layers in on top in other mediums I could go in and redraw that eye those eyes and make sure that they they that all the features are there 
and just redraw those in because of course we've smudged some of them out but just remember that these layers are not permanent okay and so you can do that now there's a couple of different things that we can look at to then fix that you can use a spray fixative I tend to not want to do that because I'm a mixed media artist and I like to use this as a layer not the finished thing so we can add in additional layers and I'm just going to add in a little bit of pink here and here for the cheeks and I'm going to really spread the, that out just to show you the soft and beautiful dreamy effects that you can have showing how to give a blush and you've auto automatically just changed the profile of this face with a little bit of blush you can just add a few dots in there and just really blend it in and the thing with these artist pastels these ones that I'm using the schminker is they blend really particularly well and some other pastels I've noticed are harder and they tend to leave their lines and you fail to see them but I'm looking at this beautiful airbrush kind of face right now that's not really complete and okay so the thing that I've been doing is you can activate these a number of ways you can leave them like that and they will eventually rub off particularly if you've got pages in a journal and you've got friction so the only way that you're going to do, even pastel artists will use a pastel fixative to fix their pastel work. So what I'm going to do is show you how I like to seal these at the moment. And then I'll show you a number of different experiments about just playing with pastels and seeing the effects that you have using different mediums. So I have a flesh tint here, but this is the actual flesh tint. So what I'll do is I'll go to the glaze. So I have this flesh tint that is my own flesh tint that I make. You've seen me use this before. This is glaze. This is the same flesh tint, but fixed with, but mixed with glazing fluid. So it is translucent. And what I find with artist pastels is that when I start to layer this glaze, which you see does not significantly change the color of what's underneath, and you can still see the strokes. And as I go over the white, you'll see how translucent that is is I use that to fix my pastels when I'm using them specifically in layering faces. And this allows me the freedom then to work on top of these, augment the beautiful dreamy airbrush look I got with the pastels in the first place, but they sealed under a layer of acrylic and blended and it does they do move a little bit you'll see that the some of the color is moving a little bit the harder you brush strokes and the the more that you work it the more that you will find that this page moves but overall I'm very happy with this and everything that I do now can then be layered upon with more paint more pastels and I've sealed the layer and I don't have to worry about it rubbing off on my fingers as I rework that layer and I often even go over the lips because they just I just want them sealed but I don't tend to go over the eyes because I want to preserve the white okay so you can see that that face is pretty much done we just need to add in a few more tonings I'm not going to go into faces today because that's not what I'm doing but I just wanted to show you that that is the majority of the purpose that I use for pastels and now I'm going to go to the other part of the lesson where we actually just sit down and play and I'm going to use a deeper shade so I've got a beautiful purple here it is a it's just called purple 2 in the schminker so all I'm going to do is just put a nice layer over there and get rid of the chalk. Now I'm going to do this as a test. It's good for you to test your mixed media products in this way. So I've got the same color on four strips. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to get rid of that chalk. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the effect that different things have on them. So the fixative is going to make that much, much brighter. But I had someone who had a uh, chat to me after my vlog, commented on my vlog, said, have you ever activated these with water? Now in my chalks days when I was using the Munyo chalks, 
yes I absolutely did and I would even use an aqua brush as they were lying in palette and apply them wet with the aqua brush rather the same way that I use ink tanks blocks very very similar process but these are not permanent or ink like ink text blocks but let's just now activate this one here with water and have a look at how you're releasing the pigments these are not classically designed to be water soluble so they are not designed to their ch chalk pigments are not actually designed to just completely dissolve in water that is not their use but they certainly can and if you have a look at the way that I'm putting all the pigment towards the edge they come up with that nice sharp edge that watercolors are traditionally for and then you can continue to work with them now these once you they are dry are still not permanent they still can be reworked and reworked again that is the nature of chalks unless you fix them so we've already seen how paint can fix them but let's just try a little bit of gesso so I'm just going to get some Liquitex gesso and I must say I'm very impressed with this Canson drawing paper so far it is holding up particularly well for 220 GSM drawing paper so I've got some gesso on my brush a good amount of it I really want to mix it in I'm going to apply that to the second bar now the gesso is going to seal the pastel pigments and it is almost like when you're using these that you're actually using acrylic pigment powder in gesso to create a paint now how doesn't that look just absolutely gorgeous and so I'm showing you another way to combine your media and make it work for you in one way or another and I love the effect of that and we can see how gorgeous it looks so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some acrylic matte medium so this is the polymer that's actually in acrylic paint and this is what binds your acrylic powders because all but paints start with powder pigments and then they have binding polymers this is one of those so essentially now I'm going to make a purple paint because I have the pigment and I'm going to add the polymer And I'm using a scrubbing motion here to get that pigment out of the paper and the tooth in the paper. So this is now considered a paint and I can paint with this and it's coming out as a glaze. Beautiful. One aspect you could use for these is to create a palette where you rub some of your chalks onto the palette and then you just create the glazes and then use that as your palette so this could be your palette with different colors and it could be something that you break off or shave parts of these in and you start colorizing your pigments and your polymers and making them work for you for a color palette that you may not actually have in paint and that's one of the things I want to stress is all of these things can all be worked and used. I showed you how to do this with intense blocks. Very similar properties, just completely different in the suspension of what the actual molecules are intended to do. They are ink based, these are not ink based. They're pigment based. So they're very different in everything that they do, but this matte medium here will seal the chalk inside it. So now I'm just going to scrub with my finger and you can see how the tooth is really accentuated have a look at how beautiful that tooth is just on the side here so I'm going to zoom in you can see how beautiful the tooth is on the side just lovely 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 and then I'm going to spray it with a fixative I'm just using a work at all fix it is and it's a matte finish non yellowing suitable for pastels charcoal pencils and chalk so perfect for this all right so the first thing you notice when I spray a fixative over that is it makes that particular pigment much more vibrant than what it was before 
and I can tell you that the vibrancy does not particularly last once the alcohol blends off and all those things are working in there it, it will go back to its normal state now the important thing to note about all of this is that if you want to completely seal these and then work on top of them you will need a couple of layers you will not need only one layer and you still have to seriously think about what product am I using am I using a black pen that will gouge into this and break through the shell of the fixative on top of this um, you need to be really aware that if you then continue start to use charcoal or brittle pencils on top of this that you could rather gouge it rather than blend with it and so I recommend that if you're going to use layers like what we've got over here now I can rub my hands over that and I am not rubbing that image away at all and I'm able now to just treat her like any other thing but you can see how quickly I achieved that that shading and I can deepen those edges I can add graphite I can add charcoal I can add water soluble anything over the top because it's now sealed and suspended underneath and stabilized by the acrylic polymer that's in that glaze that's gone over the top you can continue to glaze your shadows or you can choose to do more if you're going to do, to deepen your shadows and work onto that that is the whole first layer you don't do anything with paint until that's done and I have a journal where I've done that and just fixed it so some of you that follow me on crazy island family and my Facebook page will have seen this let me just find it here's an example of a girl where the whole face was done in pastels first light glazes over the top and not much else really just left it very smooth skin dreamy so now I just have to go to so we have here this girl here complete pastels now all I've done is use a fixative on top of this and they no longer feel chalky but what you're seeing here is that they have settled down they're not really really vibrant they don't have that depth of color yet and unless I just want to leave her like this which I'm debating whether to do that entire layer there is actually pastels all different types all different colors in the color range and some Lumiere's even some biro for her eyelashes because I found that the biro rollerball went over and did the lashes very very well you might also find too that if you're using markers or rollerballs or bullet tips over chalky substances that they will catch they will immediately activate those chalks and they will all clog up on the nibs and so it's not worth doing it you need to seriously look at work using pencils so I used a Mars Lumograph pencil there um, I could have used in certain areas the Stabilo or a China marker and I used pencil on the lips so that has all been sealed now and I can now continue to go ahead with that with other media if I so choose without now thinking that I'm going to activate the chalks so that's my quick lesson on for Technique Friday on chalks have a play with your chalks I would say that most of you at some point either have pan pastels you have your soft artist pencils or you have a set of old chalks that we call chalks for scrapbooking that you never knew what to do with and I can now say to you you know like pull them out use them in your mixed media they offer you a vibrancy that you just can't get often in other media and you can have so much fun with them and really immediately start to have a look at the variation and variegation I'm just going to pull another one out different kind of blue let me pull a pink out blend that in let's just start blending that these are blending on the page as we go I'm going to leave some of the features there great first layer just really quick and easy lots of pigment and then you can seal that in and do something with it or it just gives you a really kind of gentle dreamy look for a girl that you may be wanting to do and you've immediately got the bare bones of something and all you've done is use some chalks and your fingers and you've 
there you go bang you've got the beginnings of a face and not a lot of work whereas if you just start from paints and then your neo colors and you start to build all that process up you might find that you take a lot longer you do a lot more scrubbing and your paper might not forgive you very much and you have to really think it through so this is all about just offering you different options and opportunities about looking at different media that you particularly may even have just on hand at any given time and you may think to yourself okay well let me experiment and play and a particularly good thing for your reference book to at least even if you don't want to um, swatch all of your pastels which I have to do and then seal them right to at least then do a series of tests on your test page rather like what I've done here to see whether they um, they would color texture paste on top of over under gels all sorts of different media that you may have and how do they work with them and what are their properties when you rub them after they're all dry and the light fastness and the setting of it so if I have a look at this now that's dry let me just come in so this is dry and it's looking pretty good but I am able to still scrub a little bit of color out of it this one here this glaze I've got some left on my finger let me pick a finger that doesn't go out the side completely sealed this one here with the with the medium over the top with the gesso with water with the fixative clean finger on all four there's a little bit of dust coming out of the bottom here with the water activation there's nothing coming out of the gesso, nothing coming out of the matte medium and nothing coming out of the, the fixative. So that concludes my lesson on, on chalks or soft pastels. Learn something new today. It keeps you young and I'll see you next week.